Why don't we start with you? Okay, my first question will be that. Now that uh, Africa is the richest and the poorest continent at the very same time, with the youth and young people leading in conflict and it's a resource conflict, what do you think Africa needs to do to achieve total economic emancipation? We, we continue to talk about this vibrant youth that we have, but we need the vibrant youth to become, you know, vibrant leaders. And if we get those vibrant leaders, my sense is that there will be more demand for accountability. And we've seen in countries where the youth demands more, that our leaders then provide more. So, so again, when we talk about leadership, I think it's collective leadership. So that's the first one. Once you have leadership, you begin to have involvement in decision making because a lot more people are included. Then we can start looking at what is the incidence of decision making on the populations. This means, you know, who hurts more when a decision is taken. Sometimes we take decisions which are well intentioned, but they actually hurt the wrong people. So you have that kind of accountability. And then finally, we need to add more value to our own resources. We have a lot of resources on the continent. Again, I go back to the youth. Our youth are very smart, our youth are very innovative. But a lot of their innovation and a lot of their, uh, we saw that yesterday with the tons of youth, the one who spoke at the youth forum, but also the one who spoke in the morning and the opening, the amazing things that our youth are doing. But intellectual property rights on the continent is so expensive to register an ID. $3,000. No youth can register that ID. That's how you value the idea of a youth. But also we need to value our mines and our minerals and do what Botswana is doing cut the diamonds in Botswana, make sure that more Botswanans uh, have a job. I think if we did that, and to be able to value the youth in this way, we also need them to provide them with the right education. Artificial intelligence, technology, you had a boot camp here the other day which was part of that. So I think that's it. It's really valuing our youth, valuing our ideas, ensuring that we have leadership and accountability. Thank you. I just want to find out um, this session of life. Yes, I think what we were looking for, what, what we, we, we want to get first of all is to, I think, sound uh, the alarm. We have 10 years to get to 2030. We need to make sure that by the time we get to 2030, that today we have about 35% of Africa's population that lives uh, below the poverty line. That's still a lot. In absolute number, Africa has the largest number of poor people. We want to make sure that by the time we get to 2030, we don't have those numbers anymore. We have a lot less people that live below the poverty line and a lot more people that are affluent and uh, live a prosperous life. But for us to do that, we need to have a conversation with everybody. When we started this last year, when we had the same meeting, we had 800 people. Today we have about 3,000 people, which means we have at least achieved spreading the word. It's one thing to spread the word where Africa suffers a lot is in the implementation. We'll make a lot of promises, and I think you have to hold us accountable that you know we can deliver on those promises next year and the year after for the next 10 years to ensure that we make it. So I think, yes, we've gotten the attention, we've gotten the participation from over 46 countries at the ministerial level. They are present here. That shows, I think, the interest and the dedication, but we need to take it forward. And for uh, Zimbabwe, I think it's more than what we expected. I think when we were coming, uh, uh, we thought, okay, fine, we'll do the conference, but I must say that the government of Zimbabwe, the ministers, the head of state, the youth, uh, civil society, the parliamentarians have really opened their arms to everybody that has come. So that has also enriched the conversations we've had here. Thank you. Th two more. Yes, you. Are there any, any, any African countries which are making strides towards uh, SDGs? Yesterday, the UN WTSG say that. Uh, uh, yes, there's a, we're not on track. We're not on track to meeting the SDGs, and that's why we're sounding the alarm for this decade of action where we're saying we need to accelerate, we need to scale, we need to do uh, a lot more. But there are countries that are doing well. There's countries like Senegal that are making quite some good progress, countries like Kenya, countries like Ghana that are making progress. The problem is we're not all making consistent progress. So we need to keep the pace and scale it. And I think that that's where we need a lot more countries like Cape Verde that are also doing well. So we do need to make sure that we bring many. And that's why we say it's not enough that a few make progress. All of us need to make progress together and faster. There was talk about funding. Uh, yeah. you. Oui, madame la secrétaire exécutive, je vous ai suivi hier quand vous étiez en train d'évoquer mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Qu'est-ce que vous donne cette assurance? Que j'ai clé. Prête à En fait, l'aigre s'envole déjà, merci pour votre question. L'aigre s'envole déjà, mais la question c'est est-ce qu'elle vole assez haut, est-ce qu'elle vole avec tout le monde 
On est sûr que ça va s'envoler parce que vous avez vu vous-même, j'espère, les jeunes qui étaient là il y a avant-hier, toutes les, 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 les innovations qu'ils ont, tout ce qu'ils sont en train de faire. Vous avez vu avec nos dirigeants, si on prend l'exemple du Togo qui est monté 40 points sur l'amélioration de l'environnement des affaires, le Rwanda, le Sénégal, l'Éthiopie où nous vivons, l'Afrique du Sud, il y en a beaucoup de pays qui sont en train de travailler. Nous avons évidemment la ZLECAF, la zone de libre-échange continental africain, qui amène et qui ramène toute l'Afrique sur un même plateau de commerce, 1,2 milliard de personnes, 2,3 000 milliards de dollars de, de marché. Je pense que si on peut fédérer tout ça, c'est pour ça qu'on parle de l'accélération et de, 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 de faire un effet de levier pour s'assurer qu'on peut le faire. Je pense qu'avec ça, si l'aigle ne s'envole pas plus rapidement, euh, ça serait presque impossible qu'elle reste à terre. Donc c'est ça qui me donne l'assurance. Vous voyez les jeunes. Et nous sommes sûrs qu'avec cette configuration des jeunes et des leaders qui sont en train de mettre en place les politiques qu'il faut, l'Afrique est prête à partir. Merci. Uh, China is one of the countries that have done exceptionally well when it comes to poverty alleviation. Uh, so my question is, uh, what key lessons can Africa learn from China's experience as it tries to attain the um, SDGs? Look, um, African countries today are financing a lot of their, 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 their growth and their development. But we know that to reach the SDGs, Africa still needs about uh, 360 billion every year just to sort of finance the different gaps that we need in infrastructure, in health, in education. And the way China did it was develop also its financial sector. Today, Africa does not have a deep financial sector. So a lot of our development is dependent only on tax collection. We need to use our pension funds. We need to use our insurance schemes. We need to use more collateral on the investments that we have. We need to manage our resources uh, better so that we can get more uh, uh, taxes out of that. And I think if we were able to do that, as China did, we will also be able to, 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 to grow. The other thing that China did is China exported a lot. But before China exported outside of the region, it, it exported inside the region. So it first developed trade with East Asia. And then it went out into the West, into Europe and the United States. And that's why we're doing the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, to make sure today Africa only trades with itself at 17%. East Asia is about 68%. If Africa could trade 68% amongst itself, we will create jobs. We will create the kind of resources that are needed to grow our economies as fast as China did. So those are the lessons I think that we need to learn from China, is grow our economies, educate our people, and build a stronger financial sector. Of course, China's financial sector is now beginning to transform into a third uh, uh, institution's third wave of transformation of the financial sector. So we also need to learn from the mistakes that China made and make sure that we don't make the same mistakes. I think I'm done. Okay. Okay. So assuming that all factors are more constant, because you don't know what will change in the next uh, 10 years. Which uh, SDGs are we comfortable with that we need to protect as a continent? Look, I think every country has a different set of SDGs that will be important for it. But I think there are three SDGs that we know that are particularly important. Of course, the, the SDG 5 and gender, we know is, is a particularly important one. We need to make sure that we come together to work on that. Climate change, I think all of us are suffering from climate change, and I'll just be giving a presentation on climate change. It's affecting all of us. I think those are the things that are transborder, transnational, that we need to work well and we need to do more on. And finally, I think that the partnerships one. Because with partnerships, we can learn, we can understand what everybody is doing, so we can educate, we can provide better health care, we can improve our macroeconomy. So I think the partnerships is particularly important. Gender is 50% of our economy. If we leave them out, we will never be able to do well. So gender is particularly important, and climate change, I would say, is the, is, is the third one. But all of them are important. It's just what windows we need to take to get into them. Thank you.